So you consider yourself well versed in Android, you know all the apps, or at least you think you do. Well, here are some that we think even hardcore Android users might want to check out. So let's get into it. If you haven't tried Seal before, this is a sleek minimalist downloader that's perfect for anyone who loves sharing content from social media. It effortlessly handles links from platforms like TikTok, YouTube and Instagram, allowing you to download videos and clips in various formats and qualities. The customizable settings and support for playlists and subtitles makes it perfect for grabbing content for you to watch later. Seal offers a seamless and flexible downloading experience. While using such tools responsibly and even within legal boundaries is important to do, I think Seal provides a convenient way for you to enjoy your favorite content offline. Though you will need an external video player to view some of these downloaded files, Seal's simplicity and efficiency I think makes it one of the best apps of its kind, period. To ensure you get the latest version and support the project, I would say consider downloading Seal from the official GitHub page or F-Droid rather than the Play Store, as they are the most up to date. But I do think this is a really good looking app. It's got Material U baked in. It looks great. There is an option to just share directly to it to download and it has a nice little pop-up. Overall, I cannot recommend Seal highly enough. Another app that I can't help but love is Zero Camera. I know this is controversial, but this has become my favorite app on Android, but quite a large margin apart from Seal. This camera replacement prioritizes zero image processing. Yes, it actively removes any excessive HDR, sharpening and tonal effects to produce images that don't necessarily look over-processed like from the default camera application. The app itself is super simple. In fact, I'd call it basic. It's just a viewfinder that will let you change between 1x and 2x. Then you just hit that large shutter button with the viewfinder in place. Images are also saved as JPEG with no raw support or export available. You can try it for free, but it has a five photo per day limit. I think that should be fine for most people if you're slowing down and taking photos with intent rather than just pointing and shooting everything in your vicinity. But however, I can completely understand the frustration at the $9.99 per year subscription. Unprocess is a free open source alternative that you can get if you hate the idea of paying for these functions and zero process functions. You can find out more information on Unprocess down in the link in the description. But I do think Zero Cam is a great option for you to try. At least give it a try, see how you get on with it down in the description below. So handling the switch from Twitter to Blue Sky, Threads, Noster, and Mastodon has not been the most seamless, at least for me. Open Vibe though, at least collates all of your new social hubs into one application and even lets you post to any of the four simultaneously for consistency across all of your social networks. I think it's a gorgeous free application that lets you inhabit multiple social networks simultaneously and is an essential for anyone that uses more than one of these platforms and Android. At the moment though, it still isn't perfect with threads, but that'll improve as Meta opens up and allows more third-party apps to access the service. Also, notifications are not yet available as of this video going live, but I was told that it is coming soon. It could be the best social hub on your mobile, and for that reason, as a free application, you can't go wrong. So Twine is a gorgeous RSS app that is completely free and a simple way to add your favorite news feeds to one convenient place. If you don't like the regular Google News Feed, which sometimes I don't, you can plug in your preferred news feeds into one place for easy access. And if you didn't already, you wanna put 95 Google on there for the most up-to-date Android news. You can also use groups as well if you want specific tailored feeds or specific actual subject areas. For me, the animations are exquisite. And although I do prefer a simple timeline, it could be useful for juggling lots of feeds on your phone or tablet. And for those wondering, yes, you can import an OPML file to bring in your existing RSS collections. I don't think this is reinventing the wheel, it's just merely cleaning up the rims. So Pixel Screenshots is limited to select Google phones, but there is an option available for you if you don't have a Pixel phone, and that is AI Screenshot Finder. This basically recreates the function for just about anyone out there with an Android phone. It's practically a carbon copy with the ability to search your screenshots add to collections and do practically everything that the Google application can. All of the screenshots that you save are processed locally on your device, but once a text summary is generated, it is sent to cloud AI systems to be processed further. The team behind the app says that this isn't stored, but I would say proceed with caution either way and avoid screenshotting private information where possible, but you can apply that to absolutely anything on your phone anyway. That concern aside, it's great for those that want a piece of pixel screenshots on their own phone, so long as you're running Android 11 or higher. So I was once an avid pocket user, but it's just kind of collecting dust for me now. And obviously collecting and managing links, tidbits and other stuff I want to check out later has become a nightmare because I've neglected it. 
apps though like Cray are a perfect free option for storing things in a neat place so that I can return to a recipe, a video or a post when I have the spare time. Like practically every application in existence, there is AI baked into Crate that can help you do things like find, save content and save them into crates, which of course is where the name comes from. It just makes searching for relevant things a little bit easier. I would say it's actually better than some of the other comparable services, but the core experience of saving links into one place with custom sections is really nice. I personally use it for recipe inspiration and to collate YouTube videos I want to watch later because the default watch later playlist on YouTube is not that easy to manage and actually use. There is a home feed that lets you see trending content, which also I think is super useful at helping you discover more stuff that you might love. And for a free application, again, I can't fault it. So it's hard enough managing those files on your device at the best of times, but apps like Sponge do make it a lot more fun. I'd actually liken it to Tinder, but for your photos or your files. So what you do is you install this, you give it access to your photos, and you just swipe left or right to delete or tag content for deletion later. And what makes this better than sifting through the files application is that content is organized by the month it was downloaded, taken or saved on your phone, which means you can just go month by month and break down the files on your phone. Just select the month and you can start swiping to clear up the clutter. I really like that. There is a premium tier here, but it's a one-time $6 payment that adds support for cleaning up specific files like videos. As it stands, if you just wanna clean up photos and you take a lot of those, it might be worth a look, especially for a free application. So I'm not sure how often you need to convert kilometers to miles or work out the area of a circle, but even if it's rare, I do think Thule is a lovely little toolbox application that has lots of neat options to make things easier, specifically with calculations and conversions. There are some basic categories, including text, image, calculation, unit conversion, there's development, and a few more. On top of that, lots of the bases are covered here and I think it would take far too long to list out every single thing you can do, but being able to have all of these in your pocket rather than relying on things like Google search, which I do a lot, is super convenient. The conversion tools are great in isolation as are the text formatting tools and I've been using this quite a lot. So I think this could be super useful for students in particular, but I do think it's great for everybody else even if you just need something on the go and you don't have necessarily have an internet connection. So that's a few applications that I hope you haven't heard of. If you have heard of them, let me know in the comment sections below, you, then you really know the Google Play Store. But do you have any applications that you simply can't live without? Or you do you have a favorite that you think you need to tell people about? Let us know in the comment sections below. I'm always interested to hear what applications you use on your phones, but hopefully this has helped you. Again, thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.